that uh, to detect TB is to fight TB. Mm. First step in TB elimination, which we always call it as to find TB, to detect TB, to diagnose for TB, is perhaps where we were not using adequate or appropriate technologies. And that is where probably all the, um, you know, uh, the inappropriateness of the technologies was leading to inappropriate diagnosis and in a, in a small chain of healthcare where diagnostics is the first part, if that first part itself is not done in a correct fashion or in an appropriate way, then everything that follows subsequently will also not be appropriate. Uh, you know, most of the TB, if you do a, a geographical location of TB, you will see unfortunately most of the TB is um, uh, associated with the African countries and the Asian countries. In fact, the top 10 TB countries are from these two continents. Unfortunately, most of the interventions that have been designed for TB diagnosis has not come out of either Africa or India. So they have either come out from Europe or from the United States. Technologies are very good, but suffice to say that people who have not experienced the day-to-day -day rigmaroles of the kind of life that we have in Africa or in the Asian subcontinent uh, will not really be understanding what is essentially required to try and uh, detect cases which are there in the lab. Our technology, the MOL biotechnology, when it was initiated even as an ideation way back in the early 2000, uh, we came out with the very strong sense and purpose saying that, look, we are wanting to do something for our kind of countries. So we said we will stick to what is relevant in our parts of the country. And therefore, when we ultimately brought out the product, uh, of course, we started with our own country. The, the impact was felt immediately. In India, a national TB program, which today has more than 4,000 units of our true NAD, the Malbio platform, even though we are talking about TB, is a multi parametric platform and it get, and it's creating a lot of difference. Uh, we migrated into the global markets uh, quite early in our efforts. You know, we knew that we were not going to limit this technology only to India, even though India is the country of its birth. We knew in our minds and we were very clear that we were going to all these uh, underserved countries, the LMIC countries in Africa. And today we are there in almost uh, more than 40 countries and majorly in Africa and in Asian countries. But what is surprising, even the so-called developed world, countries like Germany, Czech Republic, Switzerland, America, the United States of America. So to your question, we are creating a lot of impact simply because with the kind of system that we have uh, brought out into the market, uh, uh, systems which are very small, very lightweight, portable, uh, battery operated, rugged, and of course, which are capable running of millions of tests, they have been put to use in the extremities of all these 40 plus countries. So what happens is when you are able to detect patients and cases in your extreme locations, you are actually then following the purpose of leaving no one behind in the testing conundrum. As I again said, unless you test correctly and you test early, you will never be able to eliminate TB. But that's only one part of the story. The TrueNet platform, which all of us have heard, is primarily being used under the WHO mandate, which has said that no more smear microscopy for presumptive TB cases. And therefore, it is getting replaced along with other technologies which is there in the market. But there is also another population, which is the asymptomatic uh, population that does not show any symptoms yet there is TB. So I would take, want to take this opportunity to say that as a, a 360 degree uh, kind of a company that looks at the TB from a holistic viewpoint, not only looking at symptomatic cases or presumptive cases, but also those population which do not have any symptoms or which otherwise could pass off as non-tubercular population, but actually the case is opposite. They have TB. So Malbio also has invested a lot of its resources into diagnostics, into TB testing, even for these asymptomatic cases. So we've invested a large uh, uh, part of our resource in acquiring a ultra portable uh, X-ray company.
uh, again in made in India initiative. With that, you can screen mass screen populations. Uh, we have also invested uh, into very, very niche technologies completely driven through AI, where you can, one, a person can just go and cough into a microphone and then the app is there on his smartphone. And within a minute or two, depending on how the cough signature is registered on the phone, you will be told that your cough may have the possibility of containing these pathogens. Similarly, we also have biomarkers, biomarkers which can be very easily got through the circulatory, that is the bloodstream. And these biomarkers are very, very specific only for active TB cases. So any person who has been challenged with the mycobacterium or who has been infected with the mycobacterium does not show any uh, signs or symptoms of an active disease. But if you test his, uh, his, or, his or her uh, blood serum or plasma, you will be seeing the presence of these biomarkers. So these are going to be very, very cost, effect, cost effective, very time sensitive, very, very short duration uh, tests, which will be very, very helpful in testing people in an otherwise healthy community. So taking all those into uh, consideration and of course taking them all by TrueNet into consideration is what we believe could be a very, very holistic way of tackling the entire TB menace. You know, the, as you said rightly, the idea is to eliminate. If you, if you really want to eliminate and you're serious about that and you said there are only 90 months, then we better get started right now. And the interventions has to be both for symptomatics as well as in symptomatics parallelly, not one at the cost of the other. So both have to go parallelly because, you know, TB as a disease spreads through air. So whether you are showing any symptoms or not showing any symptoms, you are equally at risk of giving it to the next person. Really. Most of the governments are buying the TrueNet, uh, TrueNet platform under the ages of their TB program, the respective national TB programs, but with the knowledge that once it is there, they can now use this platform for a variety of programs, whether it is HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. malaria, TB of course is there. Many of the United Nations uh, field missions are using it for the STIs. Uh, arboviral diseases like dengue, Zika, chikungunya. So a wide variety of testing can be done with the Malbaya platform. Another very, very interesting intervention, if you may want to know, is the uh, adoption of the Malbaya platform in vehicles. You know, So uh, there is a consortium of international companies like Toyota, Malbaya, Kiorei, which is an Indian company, where the uh, mobile TrueNet platform is fitted on this 4x4 Land Cruiser and this Land Cruiser now can go anywhere into the hinterland, stay in the communities for uh, days at a stretch, 5-6 days depending on the size of the community and can get the entire community tested. Interesting thing is despite being very simplistic, all the mobile machines are completely, completely connected. So they, you have a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPRS, cloud connectivity. So irrespective of where you are on the earth, your results can be transmitted back to a, a district hospital where, with which you can connect the vehicle. And you could actually uh, do a teleconsultation with the patient with their reports. And based on their reports, which is the evidence, you know, we are always talking about evidence-based laboratory medicine. So now the evidence is there in front of you. So the evidence is there in front of you, irrespective of whether you're in a, a capital city or a tier one, tier two, or a village. You know, people often thought that molecular testing is only for the big, and I say B-I-G with caps. You know, big money, big hospitals, big labs, as you said, biosafety level four, three labs, which takes um, some millions of dollars even to construct those labs. But yet, with those kind of facilities in place, the burden of disease did not come down. So that's why I said at the initial that we have now realized perhaps while we had that, it was good. No taking away from that. But that was not enough. We had we needed to be at the first point of patient contact. So, uh, you know, Bobby, I'm very happy to say that, uh, and this is being now spoken globally, interventions like Molbio is now being termed as these are companies which have change the paradigm from a lab-centric testing uh, focus to a people-centric testing focus. And we are doing exactly that. We are taking labs to the people rather than expect people to come to the lab. because. 
So welcome to another episode of NTB Dialogues. We began the NTB Dialogues uh, at about the midpoint when governments around the world committed to NTB in 2015. Before that, WHO NTB strategy was on, had already put TB elimination on the roadmap. So it's almost 90 months have passed by since that commitment was made. About 90 months are left. Less than 28 months are left for India in NTB. So uh, where are we? right now in terms of ending TB and one of the most important gateways to the TB care pathway, to the pathway which will lead us to end TB is diagnosing TB and diagnosing people who are symptomatic and asymptomatic. So with that intent and to know more about it, we have someone who has uh, contributed along with his team at Mon Diagnostics, Mr. Sumit Mitra, President of Global Sales and Marketing, uh, contributed to transforming TB diagnosis in many, many ways because as we all know, WHO recommendations say that every case of uh, presumptive TB should get a molecular test done. In India, the, uh, the, mo the maximum number of those with presumptive TB who get a molecular test get a true NAP which is developed by non biodiagnostics. So we have Mr. Sumit Mitra amongst us. Uh, Sumit, uh, please tell us, uh, we have read about that on the WHO website that Trunet is also in other countries outside of India and making an impact. So can you please tell us how Trunet is contributing internationally in uh, helping uh, uh, you know, governments diagnose TB uh, or screen those with presumptive TB effectively? Uh, thank you, Bobby. First of all, thank you for reaching out and uh, giving me this opportunity to share my experiences. Uh, so the first thing that you said, we are perhaps at a very, uh, we are at a crossroad in the in the overall TB landscape, uh, both in terms of uh, the WHO and the global health community having uh, decided to eliminate TB by 2030. So I think we are at a crossroad, but at a very interesting crossroad, because there has been a lot of experiences over the years and a lot of learnings. And I think uh, by and large, those learnings are now beginning to play out. And that is why you have seen that uh, from the experiences and learnings we have now realized that the first step in TB elimination, which we always call it as to find TB, to detect TB, to diagnose for TB, is perhaps where we were not using adequate or appropriate technologies. And that is where probably all the, um, you know, uh, the inappropriateness of the technologies was leading to inappropriate diagnosis and in a, in a small chain of healthcare where diagnostics is the first part, if that first part itself is not done in a correct fashion or in an appropriate way, then everything that follows subsequently will also not be appropriate. As uh, if I, I always of, often use this quote uh, from one of the top executives of Eli Lilly, he said that uh, to detect TB is to fight TB. So it's a very powerful statement and therefore uh, we are very happy that uh, as a company uh, from India, uh, Malbio Diagnostics has been able to bring out this uh, novel technology which is uh, known as the TrueNAT. And of course we've done a lot of work in India and a lot remains to be done. But uh, we, are very, we are also very, very happy to uh, showcase to the world that all the learnings and all the interventions that have happened over the years in terms of other platforms which are equally good, but uh, that has not kind of given the kind of impact that the TB community was uh, expecting. And uh, the reasons are not very difficult to kind of foresee and uh, assess. Most of the TB, if you do a, a geographical location of TB, you will see unfortunately most of the TB is uh, uh, associated with the African countries and the Asian countries. In fact, the top 10 TB countries are from these two continents. Unfortunately, most of the interventions that have been designed for TB diagnosis has not come out of either Africa or India. So they have either come out from Europe or from the United States. Technologies are very good, but suffice to say that people who have not experienced the day-to-day -day rigmaroles of the kind of life that we have in Africa or in the Asian subcontinent uh, will not really be understanding what is essentially required to try and uh, detect cases which are there in the land. So 
uh, cutting it short, the our technology, the mall biotechnology, when it was initiated, even as an ideation, way back in the early 2000s, uh, we came out with the very strong sense and purpose saying that, look, we are wanting to do something for our kind of countries. You can call it the third world, you can call it the developing world, whatever. So we said we will stick to what is relevant in our parts of the country. And therefore, when we ultimately brought out the product, uh, of course, we started with our own country. The, the impact was felt immediately. So I'm sure you are aware that in India, uh, the, the uh, national TB program, which today has more than 4,000 units of our TrueNAT. Uh, initially, while they purchased the systems for the TrueNAT, uh, for the TB program, before even they could start testing for TB, they got hijacked by the COVID. So they were all repurposed for the COVID. So I'm not going into that. It, it makes a lot of sense to say that the MolBio platform, even though we are talking about TB, is a multi parametric platform and it and it's creating a lot of difference. So to come to your second point, uh, we migrated into the global markets uh, quite early in our efforts. You know, we knew that we were not going to limit this technology only to India, even though India is the country of its birth. We knew in our minds and we were very clear that we were going to all these uh, underserved countries, the LMIC countries in Africa. And today, uh, Bobby, I'm so happy to tell you, uh, of course, it's the journey has been challenging and it still yeah. continues to be a challenge. Uh, today, we are there in almost uh, more than 40 countries and majorly in Africa and in Asian countries. But what is surprising, even the so-called developed world, countries like Germany, Czech Republic, Switzerland, America, the United States of America also has one of our systems. So. To your question, we are creating a lot of impact simply because with the kind of system that we have uh, brought out into the market, uh, uh, systems which are very small, very lightweight, portable, uh, battery operated, rugged, and of course, which are capable running of millions of tests, they have been put to use in the extremities of all these countries that we have, uh, as I said, 40 plus countries. So what happens is when you are able to detect patients and cases in your extreme locations, you are actually then following the purpose of leaving no one behind in the testing conundrum. As I again said, unless you test correctly and you test early, you will never be able to eliminate TB. But that's only one part of the story. The TrueNet platform, which all of us have heard, is primarily being used under the WHO mandate, which has said that no more smear microscopy for presumptive TB cases, and therefore it is getting replaced along with other technologies which is there in the market. But there is also another population, which is the asymptomatic uh, population that does not show any symptoms, yet there is TB. So I would take want to take this opportunity to say that as a, a 360 degree uh, kind of a company that looks at the TB from a holistic viewpoint, not only looking at symptomatic cases or presumptive cases, but also those population which do not have any symptoms or which otherwise could pass off as non-tubercular population, but actually the case is opposite. They have TB. So Malbio also has invested a lot of its resources into diagnostics, into TB testing, even for these uh, asymptomatic cases. So we've invested a large uh, uh, part of our resource in acquiring a ultra portable uh, x-ray company, uh, again, in, made in India initiative. With that, you can screen mass screen populations. Uh, we have also invested uh, into very, very niche technologies completely driven through AI, where you can one a person can just go and cuff into a microphone, and then the app is there on his smartphone. And within a minute or two, depending on how the cuff signature is registered on the phone, he will be told that your cuff may have the possibility of containing these pathogens. Similarly, we also have biomarkers. So it's the, the cuff signature is something that is already there and it is a product which is also uh, FDA approved and uh, it's, it's a strategy between Molbio and the manufacturer. We are shortly going to bring it out in the market. So yeah, 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 absolutely. 
the x-ray is already there. So, the scarf signature, it's called Docturnal. The name of the company is called Docturnal. And we are also uh, working with biomarkers, you know, biomarkers which can be very easily got through the circulatory, that is the bloodstream. And these biomarkers are very, very specific only for active TB cases. So, any person who has been challenged with the mycobacterium or who has been infected with the mycobacterium does not show any uh, signs or symptoms of an active disease. But if you test his, uh, his, or, his or her uh, blood serum or plasma, you will be seeing the presence of these biomarkers. So, these are going to be very, very cost, effect, cost effective, very time sensitive, very, very short duration uh, tests, which will be very, very helpful in testing people in an otherwise healthy community. So, taking all those into uh, consideration and of course, taking them all by a true net into consideration is what we believe could be a very, very holistic way of tackling the entire TB menace. You know, the, as you said rightly, the idea is to eliminate. If you, if you really want to eliminate and you are serious about that and you said there are only 90 months, then we better get started right now and the interventions has to be both for symptomatics as well as in symptomatics parallelly, not one at the cost of the other. So, both have to go parallelly because, you know, TB as a disease spreads through air. So, whether you are showing any symptoms or not showing any symptoms, you are equally at risk of giving it to the next person. Thanks a lot for this uh, in-depth you know, overview and also totally agree that uh, even in terms of India's, uh, India's Indian context, our uh, National TB Prevalence Survey, if I remember correctly, of uh, 2019-21, said about I think half half of the TB patients were asymptomatic. So, there's a lot of uh, people who we might miss if we are not doing interventions like uh, chest radiograph or X-ray or something like that, things like that. So, uh, in benefit of everyone, please update us uh, on, uh, because you mentioned COVID-19. And I think the presence of TRONAT uh, machines across the country, I think 1800 or 2000 or so, there's a large number of TRONAT machines. And I see my validated TRONAT for COVID-19, do I understand yeah. correctly? Absolutely. Very early on, right after yes. lockdown. Yes. So that was a quite a backbone of diagnostics capacity in the country of red for COVID-19 after ICMR, ICMR validation. I think this is a great question and yeah. gives me an opportunity to tell you uh, the Molbio intervention should not and will not be looked at, we hope, as a TB-centric platform. Of course, TB is heavy and unfortunately, we are the world's TB capital. And uh, we are using the Molbio platform. There are about roughly 6,000 machines, by the way of TrueNAT in India, 6,000 in India roughly, about uh, 4,500 in the uh, government, in the public space and about 1,500 in the private sector. But as I was telling you in 2019, when the national program ordered the first 1,600 units, 1,650 units I think if I remember correctly, uh, for the TB program and we had just supplied them the, all those numbers and we were about to supply the TB reagents to get the NTAP started, we were hit by COVID. And lo and behold, uh, immediately all these uh, 1,600 machines, which were actually taken for the TB program, was repurposed for the COVID program. And the government gave it to all parts of the country. And Malbio, with its uh, very strong R&D, and as you are aware, we, we rolled out the TrueNet COVID test within a month of the WHO putting out the sequences for the virus. Duly validated, by, duly validated by ICMR, duly validated by one and you know, you name it, we got the validation done. And we, uh, in, in the next two years, we sold about um, over uh, seven to eight million tests in the country. And uh, ICMR actually uh, uh, put out a, a paper in the Lancet. Uh, I think it was Dr. Nivedita and her team at the ICMR. They published that data in the Lancet saying that the introduction of the TrueNet was actually a boon uh, because nobody had apprehended or nobody saw the COVID crisis coming. So we started with 1,600 uh, for the TB program, but now repurposed for the uh, COVID testing. And in the interim two years, that is 2021 and 22 end of another 3,500 machines got purchased by several of the uh, state governments, again, using the government machinery only for the COVID testing crisscrossing from Arunachal Pradesh on our eastern side borders to Leh Ladakh 
in our on our northern side borders you know i come from the northeast and for me it gives me a real real high to know that all the seven sister states of the northeast today are criss crossing with trunat and many of the ministers have gone on record to say in public how the uh, uh, trunat intervention helped them uh, uh, assist their communities with uh, covid testing so today of course as we sit in 2023 we are looking at a likely post covid scenario but uh, bobby let me tell you this because now the 6000 machines are already there the country actually is now um, literally and i'm i'm saying i'm choosing my words with a lot of caution the country is actually now infrastructurally geared to tackle any further of course i'm not saying that this is enough the country which is as big as india the size and magnitude 6000 is not a big number but something is always better than nothing we we had nothing in the early 2018 or 2019 and today we have 6000 so today we can tackle any futuristic pandemic then hopefully it will not be there but if it should come we are by and large ready all these 6000 machines or 5000 machines at the public health are being now given back to the tb program we have got in several of the states of the northeast of our country we have got the women's health screening for the cervical cancer wherein we have as is for the cervical cancer screen also on the same platform so we are having a host of diseases which can now be done on this singular platform exact same thing bobby is what we are trying to replicate internationally most of the governments are buying the trulat uh, trunat platform under the aegis of their tb program the respective national tb programs but with the knowledge that once it is there they can now use this platform for a variety of programs whether it is hiv aids malaria tb of course is there many of the united nations uh, field missions are using it for the stis uh, arboviral diseases like dengue zika chikungunya so a wide variety of testing can be done with the malvia platform another very very interesting intervention if you may want to know is the uh, adoption of the malvia platform in vehicles you know so uh, there is a consortium of international companies like toyota malbio kiorai which is an indian company where the uh, malbio trunat platform is fitted on this 4x4 land cruiser and this land cruiser now can go anywhere into the hinterland stay in the communities for uh, days at a stretch 5 6 days depending on the size of the community and can get the entire community tested interesting thing is despite being very simplistic all the mall bio machines are completely completely connected so they you have a wifi bluetooth gprs cloud connectivity so irrespective of where you are on the earth your results can be transmitted back to a, a district hospital where with which you can connect the vehicle and you could actually uh, do a teleconsultation with the patient with their reports and based on their reports which is the evidence you know we are always talking about evidence based laboratory medicine so now the evidence is there in front of you you don't have to go by your empirical you know physicians try often tend to work on their empirical minds so the evidence is there in front of you irrespective of whether you're in a, a capital city or a tier 1 tier 2 or a village so that's the kind of interventions that we are already seeing to uh, seeing uh, happening and as we move into the international arena more and more countries are uh, buying in which is which is the great thing buying in into this reality because this is not something it's a fanciful story that is being told it is a reality that has now evolved over lots of years of experience people know where we went wrong we as a community the tv community and therefore once you know and you uh, realize that yes something went wrong it's very easy to take uh, course correction and i think that's what the tb community globally is doing right thanks a lot this was really important so quickly about i would like to put your mind and yeah. take your insights i will be speaking with the national tb program managers of different tb hybrid nations and uh, uh, please don't ask me the country no, but, uh, sure. <laughs> but uh, just not to put them on spot because yeah. they all are trying to do what they can in the given circumstances yeah. so the, that country has uh, 100% molecular testing but test only one third of the estimated burden so probably approaches like the lab on wheels or other innovative approaches like the, uh, the sorry the 
the puff the dictaphone the, the puff signature the puff signature, the puff signature. Yes. those kind of approaches preventing may be more helpful for them to reach to the full cascade or full number of you know the people who have to be right so yeah no you're right so whenever a country says that we are fully equipped with the molecular technology what i would assume they are wanting to portray is that all their laboratories that they have the registered laboratories are all equipped with uh, the molecular technology which is a reality many countries that kind of uh, system is uh, available uh, all along and it is not related to tb it was molecular testing as a whole yes. you know people often thought that molecular testing is only for the big and I say BIG with caps, you know, big money, big hospitals, big labs, as you said, biosafety level four, three labs, which takes um, some millions of dollars even to construct those labs. But yet, with those kind of facilities in place, the burden of disease did not come down. So that's why I said at the initial that we have now realized, perhaps while we had that, it was good, no taking away from that. But that was not enough. We had, we needed to be at the first point of patient contact. So, uh, you know, Bobby, I'm very happy to say that, uh, and this is being now spoken globally, interventions like Molbio is now being termed as these are companies which have changed the paradigm from a lab centric testing uh, focus to a people centric testing focus. And we are doing exactly that. We are taking labs to the people rather than expect people to come to the lab because in many a country, especially in the LMIC's country, unfortunately TB, of course, there is no economic barrier to who gets TB or does not. But oh, if you look historically, it is the marginalized sections of the society, the malnourished, undernutritioned people who get TB. And for us to expect those people to walk into a lab, People who do not know what they're going to eat for their next meal, for us to expect them to come to the lab and get a test done and then wait for three, four, five days to get a report, I think that was asking for too much. So all this has happened, all this experience has been you know, taken in, it has sunk in with the governments of the day and that is why the push that no, we cannot wait for patients to come, we have to go to them and where do we have to go? We have to go to them where they are to the first point, to the PHC, the community health center. So as you mentioned, if you have gone to the uh, community health center that you mentioned, you will not see the fanciful uh, laboratory that you were mentioning of 50. Exactly. So we don't need air conditioning. That is where the uh, ideation happened. That do we need air conditioning? We do not. We do not have electricity. So do, do, do our machines run on electricity? No. It has to run on batteries. Because even if you have the best of the best facility in your laboratory, but you don't have the resources to run that, it's, uh, it's not really helping. So that is the kind of uh, paradigm change that you are seeing now. And all this is working, uh, I'm touching wood saying, in saying that all these are uh, efforts in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And if not by 2030, at least, you know, TB is a historical disease. We've spent centuries. So maybe a five-year thing is a little too tight. But if this continues in the vein that we are witnessing today with all the stakeholders, the funders, the Global Fund, the WHO, United Nations, and all the governments involved in it, and technologies such as ours, and these uh, very, very niche technologies like the AI-powered smart uh, the cuff signature, with the biomarker, the ultra portable x-rays, I think all put together in appropriation, you know, it's not that one uh, technology is appropriate for everywhere. So each has its appropriate positioning. So all put together in their appropriate positioning will go a long way and I think we'll be very close to our uh, elimination goals. Okay, so that given, and we need to make sure everyone gets screening. Absolutely. All those who have TB get accurate diagnosis, early diagnosis, right treatment, care and support. Uh, that that needs to happen. And we think, as you are saying, we are moving towards the direction. So, what is the message? As you know, the global, uh, the heads of the governments will be meeting uh, in about two weeks at the United Nations High Level meeting. So, uh, so what is a citizen, and as someone who's part of this whole movement, uh, what is your message? Uh, I don't know if I would be uh, 
the right person to send the message, but uh, I think I will rather translate it to a wish list, that this is what we wish as a community that should happen. See, one thing is the global community has a reason. They are awake. They have acknowledged that there was a gap. They have acknowledged that what we were doing so far was inadequate, and that's why all the mandates have come in. So that's the first good step. The second is technologies have been identified. You know, technologies such as the one from Mobile and several others in the pipeline have been identified. And we keep talking about introduction of newer and newer technologies. You know what? We feel that when you have identified technologies, you should also allow those technologies to go to scale and see how they impact. So if I were to make a wish list to all the heads of state and the governments, without any bias, that it's great that you have identified gaps, it's great that you have identified what needs to, to be done to plug those gaps, and having done that, and also having experienced in, in a journey like the introduction of the new tools project where Mobile was uh, essentially used across countries. Now that you have seen the impact, probably it is time for you to scale up. And there are uh, partners like the Global Fund, uh, everybody else, the uh, United Nations and the various arms of the United Nations, they're all waiting that they will be in it together in terms of providing funds and providing resources. The countries just have to now psych themselves up and say, look, we have tasted success, success in a quote unquote, it's not really a, a success when you run on the pilot. But having seen the positive impact and the outcomes of these initial pilots, our uh, request would be to all these uh, governments, especially uh, the TV endemic countries, to go for scaling up whatever they have started. We believe that once these are scaled up, that's when the bigger impact and the more number of case detections will happen. And that's, with, that's when we will be able to say that indeed, we have driven a long way and we have found those missing millions. I really hope uh, your wish list come true. Like this is a very important thing. But the best of diagnostic technologies work as good as for the rich and the poor, in the best of hospitals and in the, the very basic and primary healthcare level. And if the person is not able to come to primary healthcare level for whatsoever reason, the technologies and diagnostics and screening should reach to the person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so thanks a lot. Uh, we were friends we were listening to Mr. Sumit Pitra, the president of Global Sales and Marketing at Mall Bio Diagnostics. So thanks a lot, Mr. Sumit. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you very much. We are in it together. Absolutely. And we will share with you all our stories yes, as they happen. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.